CataractCoach.com. My week. What happened to the capsule? This week features a variety of cases by me as the operating surgeon. So let's watch this case here. Let's get into it. There's the nucleus being removed. Up to this point, totally normal case. Normal rexus, normal everything, normal nucleus removal. And I know you want to see the good stuff. So here's the end of nucleus removal. Now let's look at the capsule and cortex removal. So watch carefully in this case. I want you to tell me what's going on. So again, a routine case that I performed this week. I'm adjusting the scope lights there to get a better red reflex. So more of the coaxial lighting instead of the paraxial lighting. Taking out the cortex, and that looks pretty routine, coming up pretty nicely. And I'm looking at the rexus edge, and that seems pretty good. It's not really moving around. I don't think there's any zone or weakness so far. Oh, a little bit of nuclear chip. So we can try aspirate that with the IA probe, maybe use a spatula to, to mush it into the port. And that looks pretty good. Now you saw the title slide, so you know there's going to be some capsule thing going on. Let's see what that is. So now here's the rest of the cortex being removed here. And now the subincisional remains. That's a little bit more tricky. And we're getting that out. And whoa, 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 whoa. There you go. That's the posterior capsule. So we let go of that pretty quickly. Good reflexes there. Oh, even more grabbing. Mm, so this is a case where the posterior capsule seems to be extra floppy. So we'll polish up here, aspirating the, the underservice of the anterior capsule rim. And you can see there is some zonal laxity there. There is, if you look carefully, some lens tiny chips that got behind the posterior capsule through a gap in zonal support and into that anterior hyaloid space. And so we'll fill the capsule bag here with our viscoelastic or cohesive. And let's get the lens in. So unfortunately, we didn't break the capsule bag, but there's a lot of stress there. Remember, there's so much variation and variety in patient anatomy and tissue strength and tissue handling. And so you got to be very cautious these eight, in these eyes. So I'll deliver the lens here in the capsule bag. And as that goes in there, I'm not going to do a whole lot more capsule polishing. Or if you want to do a little more polishing, you can do it. But let's have the IOL in the bag first. You know, there's a delicate balance between polishing up that capsule and, you know, causing an iatrogenic issue. So get that lens centered up. It looks pretty good. See, it's a good rexus. And it looks like it's reasonable support. I just want to make sure the lens is in a good position of support. I'm rotating it so that one haptic is in that area, the top right of your screen, where I noticed that capsule wrinkling, where I got the title slide picture from. So just to have that haptic as an extra bolster in that area, that's why I rotated the lens to that position. Going underneath the optic now, removing viscoelastic and any little fragments that remain. But do remember, look carefully, you'll see some stuff in the anterior hyaloid space. You've got the material that went through the capsular, uh, the zonal support and behind the posterior capsule, and that's another indication of some laxity in the capsular bag. And so this will be perfectly fine for this patient. This patient is uh, going to do great. So we'll take out, again, that viscoelastic, again, that lens position where I want it. I'm not going to worry about polishing up the capsule any more than that. Look at the fragments there in the anterior hyaloid area. And so those will all be resolved. Those will dissolve in the you know inflammatory cascade. And so patients will certainly need some post-op steroids. So let's seal up that main incision here. You notice just a mild amount of hydration. And now going in here, make sure the lens is stable, hydrating um, the air, squirting into the angle to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic. That looks pretty good. This will be nicely supported. Patient will have a beautiful outcome. But you know, keep in mind variations in, pa in patient anatomy and tissue and that's to be expected here. A little triamcinolone to help quell that inflammation in the post-op period. We want this eye nice and quiet, especially because there's a little tiny bit of lens material that got behind the posterior capsule. And there you go. Good pressure there at the end of the case. So interesting case. I guess you're going to see these ones too. That's why I tell patients, you know, cataract surgery, yeah, it sounds routine, but every case is individual. And there's a stress that's involved here. You know, when your when you're surgeon is sitting there hunched over the microscope and intensely focusing and concentrating, yes, I get it. It's five or six minutes or whatever it is, but it's a tough case. Oh, there you go. Ten diopter lenses. You can tell it's a very myopic eye. You want to be extra careful and not break the capsule bag there. So ten diopter lens will be placed in the capsule bag. And then here looks like at the end, a small limbal relaxing incision. So... Patients can have these loose capsular bags, and that can be more common in these bigger eyes that are highly myopic, like this one with a 28 millimeter axial length and a 10 diopter IOL. But we can handle it, and everything can go beautifully. So check out the rest of this week, even more interesting cases from me during my week.